and hurt you and hurt your family. Amen. Maybe you have unforgiveness tonight. If you have unforgiveness, just know that, that Jesus Christ never did you wrong. Yet you did a lot of wrong against him with sin. Yet he still loves you. So if you repent, if you repent, he will forgive you of your sins. Amen. And that's the point. Is that if he loves you that much and, and that's a righteous God, who are you not to forgive those around you? If tonight you are hearing this message and you have unforgiveness towards your mother or your father or your brothers, your sister, your cousins, your old friends, reach out to them. Reach out to those that you have unforgiveness towards and forgive them. Because if you do not forgive your brother, your father in heaven will not forgive you. Amen, and brother. you see, you've got a lot of debts. You've got a lot of debts against God. But you see, you've got a lot of debts against God. But your brother only has a few debts against you. And yet God forgives you of a lot. Why can't Amen. you forgive him of a little? Amen. You know, you need to forgive those who've done you wrong tonight. If you're hearing this message and you're like, yeah, well, maybe this is true. Go ahead and forgive those people who've done you wrong. Now, you don't have to be foolish, but forgive them. Repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ saves. There is life through the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you call out on your name, if you say, Jesus, I need you. If you say, Jesus, save me. Jesus will save you. You see, you might be having difficulty in relationships with finances, with work, or whatever it may be. And it might be just because, like I said earlier, coming back to the beginning of the message, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if you're not following the will of God for your life, you're not following the right way. You know, and just because something looks good, just because the alcohol looks good now, the cigarettes look good, and those women look good right now, does not mean it's gonna look good later. And you see, there, 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 there's Amen. a story in the Bible and it was with Abraham and Lot. And Abraham told Lot, he goes, whichever way you go, I'm going the other way. And you see, Lot saw a beautiful land. It looked good to the eye, just like your alcohol looks. It looked very good to the eye. And there was waterfalls. It was a luscious land filled with flowers. And he took that path when Abraham took a dirt road. And you see, Lot ended up in Sodom, you know? Amen. And in Sodom, it was a very wicked place, a very wicked place, but we live in a day. We live in a day where we live in places that are even more wicked than Sodom. Even more wicked. And you see, God is so merciful. Amen. God is so merciful that he still put breath in your lungs because you breathe the breath of God. When you breathe in, you breathe Yah. And when you breathe out, you breathe away. You pronounce the name of God on average 22,000 times a day. When you breathe, when you breathe, you proclaim the name of God. And a lot of, a lot of you out here are breathing, but you see, your breath could be stopped at any minute. Your breath could cut, be cut short at any second. You see, you could be hit by one of these cars. You could be hurt. Something could happen. You see, and you don't want to die. Because it's, if you're not right with the Lord and you die, you ain't going to be seated in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you give your life to Jesus Christ and you repent of your sins, you will be eternally seated with him. And he will say one day, well done, good and faithful servant. Instead of depart from me, I never knew you. And you see, we serve an almighty God who knows absolutely everything. He is omniscient. He knows everything. But if he doesn't know you because you ain't ever had a relationship with him, he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. So what I'm saying is, it is crucial in the second. If you say, honestly, God, I don't know you. But Lord, I want to know you. Please, Lord. I'm willing to repent. I'm willing to cry out. I'm willing to be a son because there's a parable in the Bible. It talks about the prodigal son. And this son, he's out late at night. He ran away from his father's home and he's just spending all of, all of his father's estate money. And he's partying and having all of his fun of his life. But then he runs out and he has no more money. And I have a feeling a lot of people are out here in that situation. They have no more money to live in that party life. So then this son, he picks up his stuff and he says, I will go back to my father from where I came. Maybe at least I could be a servant there to earn a little bit of money. And as he's walking down the road back to his father, his father chases him down the road with a ring and a rope. And he says, my son, and he kills the fatted calf room. He gives him a great thing. He runs after him. And the love, the love of the father running after the prodigal son is the love of the father in heaven calling after you. There's the love of the father calling after you saying, son, return home. Is the call. Is the call of the prodigal son to come home. The Bible says that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 just persons who need no repentance. None of us is good. None of us is righteous without the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one who is good. 
There's only one who is good. And when you come to the when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't be lukewarm because the Bible says, because you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And vomit's a sign of rejection. You do not want the Lord Jesus Christ to reject you. So don't reject him. Accept him. You see, many are called, but few are chosen. And tonight, will you choose to take that call? Tonight, will you choose to say, Jesus, I'm going to serve you? You see, you're going to say, Jesus, I'm not going to be lukewarm. Tonight, I change my life. Tonight, not tomorrow morning. Tonight, I'm going to choose to be hot or on fire for you, God, because I love you. I'm passionate for you, Lord. Tonight, I'm going to choose to serve you. And you're not going to be right-ish and lukewarm. You're going to be righteous and hot for the Lord. Because the Bible says, the Bible says, well, John the Baptist, he was calling out and he said, I baptize with water, but indeed the one who is coming after me will baptize you with both the Holy Spirit and fire. And I'm unworthy to undo his sandal straps. You see? And if you call out on the name of Jesus Christ and you sincerely mean it, you confess with your mouth that he is Lord and Savior, that he is the Son of God, that he died and rose three days later from the cross and you believe in your heart, you can be saved. And we have an open call for anybody who can hear the sound of my voice to come here and we will pray we will pray for your salvation. You can accept Jesus Christ and get the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will help to remove unholiness from you. If you submit yourself to God and you say, Jesus, I'm tired of living a life of poverty. I'm tired of living a life of addiction. I'm tired of living a life that's only going to hurt me because I've been listening to the devil all about stealing, killing, and destroying. If you're tired of that, I'm telling you that there is peace and everlasting life from the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the one who is not the author of confusion. A lot of people out here are confused. They're confused because they don't have clarity from the true gospel message of Jesus Christ. You see, and we don't even use difficult words. When Paul spoke to the men, he said, we did not come to you with complexity of speech or persuasive words of men, but with the simplicity that is in Christ. And here's the simplicity, okay? I want to tell you all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And gospel literally means good news. You want to talk, brother? No? God bless you. Come here. I love the support. God bless you, bro. Yeah, you're chilling? Amen. So, brothers, here's the gospel. I just got support. I, I just got some support from this brother. It reminds me of Barnabas. You see, the, the name of Barnabas meant the son of encouragement. He had the gift to encourage others. And this brother, he just encouraged me right now. You see, and the gospel means the good news. And the good news is that Jesus Christ died for you because he loves you so much. This is the good news. The good news is that Jesus loves you so much. You believe in Jesus, brother? Jesus died for you. A lot of people ask, what is Jesus doing for me? What will Jesus do for me? But it's, what, it's about what Jesus already did for you. He loves you so much as God that he died for you. And he paid for all of your sins on the cross. And if you call out on the name of Jesus... You no longer have to worry about these things. God Amen, bless you, brother. brother. Yeah, Amen. God bless you. God bless you, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But this is a call. This is a call because we're getting some amazing support here. But this is a call to repent and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you got the living water from the Holy Spirit, you ain't going to want alcohol. Right, if you had the living water from that. A lot of people out here like to get high. They're smoking. But you see, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, roams about like a roaring lion. And I'm telling you, if you're out here, he's like a roaring lion seeking his prey. You are the prey to the predator, the devil, if you're out here smoking and drinking. And he's already won. Because when you're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, instead oh, you're filled with spirits. When you're supposed Woo. to be filled with the living water of God, you're filled with alcohol. When you're supposed to be high in the spirit and seated high in heavenly places, you are high in weed. You see, you're not supposed to be high off of weed. You're not supposed to be high off of all sorts of drugs. No, you're supposed to feel the freedom and living power of Jesus Christ. You know, and you could become a new creation. Maybe you're saying, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy. But you know what? Think about Peter. You know, you might be denying Jesus right now. You might have denied him a lot. You might have said, I, I've lived a sinful lifestyle. But Peter... There is a man, a disciple of Jesus Christ, his name was Peter. And Peter denied Jesus three times. And yet, 
he, he reclaimed his love for Jesus. He said, Jesus, I love you three times. And he went on to lead the upper room of apostles and disciples. And he went on to save 3,000 souls by the name of Jesus Christ and became an apostle to the Jews. And Peter even had his books up in the New Testament. You see, Paul was persecuting Christians. You see, but then he met Christ and saw the persecutor, became Paul the apostle. And he did not feel worthy. Yet none of us is good. None of us is worthy because we all have sin that we need to repent of. And the Holy Spirit allows you to repent of that sin and be holy as he is holy. And if you submit yourself to God and seek first after the kingdom of God, he will cleanse you and his righteousness will be added unto you. And you see, a lot of you go to bed at night with the void and a lot of you are afraid. You don't want to go to bed because now you're going to wrestle with the thoughts in your head in your bed late at night. And you got to wrestle with your thoughts, but not instead you're out here on the streets. You see, talking with people you shouldn't be talking with, smoking things you shouldn't be smoking, drinking things you shouldn't be drinking. Drinking, and that's what happens. You see, if you don't have light, you walk in darkness. But I hold in my hand the Holy Bible. And the Bible is a lamp unto my feet and yours as well. And I'm telling you, without the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, without the light of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit to, to reveal them, you're walking in darkness. You see, and you look around and you see all of the amazing city lights on all of these buildings. But if they was all shut off, you'd be in pitch darkness and you wouldn't be able to walk back and see where you're going. And you see, although you say, well, that's a ridiculous concept. Let me tell you is that that's exactly how you're walking in the spirit. That's exactly how you're walking in your life without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit. You have no lamp, you have no fire, you have no light to guide your path. So you're just walking in darkness and you're aimless. And my question to you tonight is, do you want to be in the same place as you are today in one year from now? When the new year rolls around, do you want to be in the exact same place you're in now? Because a lot of you have been living the same the past year, two years, and decade. And I don't say this to be a jerk, but I'm like an alarm clock here. And sometimes they're annoying. You know, they just keep going off and ringing. And I'm telling you that the time is at hand. Repent. Repent and believe in the gospel for the time is at hand. We could enter the great tribulation at any moment. We could get a terrible, we could get an, another terrible present coming in office, making up all these rules and laws. And you know what? Even, even if we don't get that, you could die at any moment. And then you're going to have to face God. And what will you tell God? Will you tell God I was good? Because that, that's not going to get you saved. Because there's a lot of good moral people in hell who didn't believe in Jesus. There's a lot of moral people who thought they were good, but didn't accept Jesus. And there's only one who is good. And by his blood, by his blood, you are made righteous if Amen. you accept him. And you can be righteous if you call out and say, God, make me holy. God, help me to know you. You see, we're here. We're here to restore that family unit. And if you're having problems with your family, it's because you're not with them. You got to build it up. The devil comes to destroy families. He comes to bring in his perversion and his twistedness. I even see a transgender flag in the TD bank. What is this? Do you want your kids to grow up with that? Do you want your little nephews and nieces to see that little cousins? No. Nah because this is pervertedness. And you see, perversion literally means the wrong version. And you see, there's only one version in which you're supposed to live, and that's holy by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you don't live in the right version, you're gonna live in the wrong version, the perversion. And when you kick God out of schools and society, and when you don't like the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you give a foothold to the devil. And that's why the Bible says, give no place to the devil. And here's my question tonight. Is that you might say, oh, it's fine to drink a little bit, it's fine to do what I'm doing a little bit. But let me ask you, is that if the Lord Jesus Christ was right next to you, would he approve of your actions? And that's a serious question. You know, would he approve of what you're doing? And if you wouldn't, it's time to change. It's time to repent and say, God, I need you. Make me holy. If anybody wants to come over here and pray with us. If anybody wants to come over here and repent and say, Jesus, I need you. If anybody feels like, you know what, this message was for me. Then come over here and we'll pray. We'll pray. We'll pray with you. And you can accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And you can live a sanctified life. Because the Lord Jesus is calling you. Would you like to talk, bro? You believe in Jesus? No? Do you believe in Jesus? God bless. God bless. So we got one person. We're here. God bless. God bless. Hallelujah. God bless. Hallelujah. Today is the day of salvation. As we got to this corner, we saw that everyone out here, they were immediately manifesting with demonic spirits coming up and trying to uh, confound us and trying to hit us and say all this crazy stuff. But the Bible says, touch not God's anointed. 
And when you stand with God, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he'll condemn that. So as we stand here, we're here to call you to the Lord Jesus. We're here to tell you that right now it's an emergency. You're in a spiritual fire. And in order for you to get out of that spiritual fire, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because he is the one to pull you out of that fire and into his marvelous light. Yo, Vince, can you just stand back there and uh, watch the phone here? Hallelujah. So I spoke with a woman today and she was just saying how she's a Hebrew Israelite, but in reality she really wasn't because she was saying that she was a sorcerer. She was a witch. And she was saying that every time she comes out, the sun comes out. How ironic is that? It's dark right now. It's nighttime. And she's still there. So that just shows. What's up, man? What's up? Huh? Look, man, Jesus has a plan for you, bro. I can see it in your eyes, man. I used to listen to Method Man a lot, but I want you to understand, bro, that your life is going to come to an end soon. And we all going to stand before God. And as we stand before God, He's going to judge us according to all that we've done. And God doesn't want you to perish away in your sin. He wants you to come to Him so that you can live with Him in peace and unity, man. It's true. The same way that you probably feel right now drunk and you feel like the world is on your shoulders and just cruising. I'm telling you, when you give your life to Jesus and he fills you with your with his Holy Spirit, you'll feel much better than that, man. And as you stand before me, I want you to know that. Back up, please. Jesus, he can change your life, bro. Everybody has trauma and things that they've been through that's just unfortunate. Let's just think about it. But at the same time, Jesus promised, he promises to heal your broken heart. If you fall in any area, if you made any mistake, if you feel as if you can't be forgiven, God can forgive you, bro. Because he loves you. And he wants to change your heart, he wants to change your mind. So as we stand here, back up for you. In the name of Jesus, as we stand here, we're calling you to the light of God. Because he loves you so much. So... Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins. He rose from the dead in three days. And he's coming back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. So we can play around now. We can joke and we can do all these things with our life. Hold on, I'm preaching. We can do all this stuff with our life. But one day, we will stand before God and God will judge us. We have to turn away from our sin and turn towards Jesus Christ. There's only one way out. There's only one way to escape the judgment that is to come, and it's through God. So, again, we saw a woman, and she, she was claiming to be a witch and all types of demonic things. But you can't be a Hebrew Israelite practicing witchcraft. So if you think you're a Hebrew Israelite, you can't be saying, oh, I'm, I'm God myself. That's deception. You see, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, take heed that no man deceive you. A lot of times we are being deceived and we don't even know it. And we're deceiving others. But the truth of Jesus Christ will set you free. And that truth is that you accept that he died on a cross for your sins and he rose from the dead in three days. And he's coming back for people that are wholly devoted to him. This is Jesus' corner. This is Jesus' block. This is Jesus' world. And Jesus wants you to be a part of his heavenly kingdom when you die. Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want you to burn. He doesn't want you to be in sulfur and fire, agony and pain for eternity. But instead, he wants you to be at peace with him, walking on streets of gold. And the only way you can walk on streets of gold is by giving your life to the one who's worth more than gold. His name is God. The person that created you, created your mom, created your dad, created your grandparents. His name is God. His name is Jesus. And if you call on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Right now, we come against every demonic and wicked, unclean spirit in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that this is Jesus' street corner. Because he says that the earth and the fullness thereof, it belongs to him and they that dwell therein. Everything that you see now is God's. And as we stand on God's street corner, we're calling God's people back to him because everyone was created by God you may not be God's children some of you may be children of the devil because you do what 
Your father does, the devil does. He steals, he kills, he destroys. But God wants to give you everlasting life through his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to bless you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to change your life for the better so that you're no longer lusting at the women all the time, struggling to be faithful and committed. What was that? Let's, let's wrap. What, what, you got a question about something? You think lust is good? Oh, it's a bad thing? All right. What's a good thing then? Uh, having a relationship with God. Having a relationship with God. Yo, that's your leader. Y'all got to follow him. He's smart, man. He got wisdom. Yeah, you got to follow God. And you got to follow the true God. His name is Jesus Christ. And he's the way to the truth. People today, they want truth. People today, they're hungry for knowledge. But the Bible says that when you're hungry for the wrong type of knowledge, the worldly knowledge, then you won't be receiving Christ. People are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They're destroyed for wisdom. And the Bible says if you want wisdom, you got to fear God. You're not fearing God when all you do is sit around and smoke weed. You're not fearing God when all you do is fornicate. You're not fearing God when all you do is steal and lie. That's not fearing God. That's making yourself God. And that violates the first commandment, which says that there shall be no other gods before me or beside me. We become so prideful and we think that we're of the same level of God when God can destroy us all right now. He can strike us down dead right now. And where would you go? That's the question. Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? I want everybody to go to heaven tonight. I want everybody to receive salvation from Jesus. I know that a lot of you, or all of you, because we're broken and we're in a corrupted and fallen world, I know that we're all struggling with something. Everyone has a story. Everyone's been through some type of pain. Everyone has experienced tribulation to some extent. But God promises that he will deliver us from every evil and wicked thing that we go through in life. God promises us that if our family members forsake us, mother or father, we grew up without a father, grew up without a mother. God says that he will take care of us. And he can take care of us better than your mom, better than your dad, better than anybody. Because he is the creator. And he's all powerful and he's all knowing. Everything that you desire in your heart, God knows about. Every mistake that you've ever made, God knows about. And God is offering you forgiveness of your sins today. But it starts by you saying the name Jesus, calling out Jesus' name. Because scripture says, whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. You want to be saved? Call on Jesus. You don't want to be saved, then don't call on Jesus. You have free will to just walk past us and ignore us like we ignore sin every day. But at the same time, this is not a thing that you want to ignore. Because when God comes back in fire and with wrath, there will be no such thing as ignoring him. The Bible says all the earth will behold his majesty. And as they behold God, God's going to come back with a flaming sword. I know our grandmothers probably taught us, oh, God is so loving. God is so caring. That's what my grandmom used to say until I read the Bible and it said Jesus was going to come back with a sword and he was going to be killing people and he was going to be scorching them with fire. He's going to be breathing on the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth, destroying him and his works. You see, the Bible says that God is a man of war. Some of us have been playing with God as if he's an action figure, but he says he's a man of war and he will wage war against you if you reject his ways. Why would he do that? So that he can draw you back to him when you're afflicted and you're totally beaten up. It's kind of what happened to Job in the Bible. The Bible says that Job, he lost his family, he lost his sons, he lost his kids, he lost his livestock, he lost his money, he had boils, he lost his health, but yet he didn't lose God. So even if you feel as if you're losing God today, even if you believe you're not in right standing with God today, there's hope for your soul. And that hope for your soul is that you say, Lord, I know I messed up. I know that I'm wrong. I know I'm fornicating. I'm getting high. I'm getting drunk. I know I'm making stupid decisions. I know I'm affirming LGBTQ. I know I'm promoting abortion, but I want to repent today because I know that that leads to hell. That leads to destruction. I speak for the unborn because you were once unborn. I speak for the unborn because I was once unborn. 
Who do we think we are to take the life of an innocent child inside of their mother's womb? We think we're God, but the Bible says God won't be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. A lot of us are going to reap hellfire. A lot of us are going to reap death and destruction ourselves because we're advocating for the killing of innocent children. And a lot of us are killing ourselves. We're killing ourselves with poisonous food. We're always eating high fructose sugar and, and we're always eating donuts and fast food. We're living off of oil and chips. I'm not talking about you, by the way. I know you're standing right in front of me. I'm not talking about you. But that's how America is. America is leading in obesity. Anywhere you go in America, you're going to see a big belly somewhere. You're going to see somebody that's barely able to walk up the steps somewhere. And that's because in our country, we don't pri prioritize our health. And in order for us to prioritize our health, I'm not saying you need to be right with God, but that should be something you, you should want to do. You shouldn't want to live in a body that can barely walk across the street. And God cares about the little things. The Bible says that exercise, physical exercise, it profits a little bit. It's good to take care of your temple because the Holy Spirit wants to live inside of you. The Holy Spirit wants to live in you and he wants to direct your paths and your ways. He doesn't want you eating a triple cheeseburger and falling asleep when you're on your way to work. He doesn't want you waking up feeling depressed because of all of the chemicals and additives in your food. Jesus wants you to wake up feeling the fullness of joy that comes by taking heed to his commandments and accepting him as your personal Lord and as your Savior. You know, we were just reading in a book of Acts how it says that they would break bread together and they would go from house to house and they would take joy in what they would eat. Oh, yeah. You can't take joy in drinking six milkshakes. Your stomach's going to be hurting, you're going to have diarrhea, you're going to get a headache, nausea, all types of stuff. That's what happens when you're foolish with what you eat and God cares about what you eat. But what, what is most important is that we eat the word of God. We read the Bible for what it is. We consume and digest it so that we can live it out so that others can receive everlasting life through our testimony. We want you to read the Bible. You guys read everything else. You read billboards all over the city. You read signs. You, you read menus when you go out to eat. How come you don't read the word of God for life and for everything that pertains to godliness. Read the Bible. It's easy, you scroll on your phone all day, but you can't scroll through the scriptures. Amen. The scriptures will give you life, but what are you getting out of looking at everybody else's business on social media? You get nothing. You start comparing yourself. You start thinking that your life is worse because you don't have whatever it is that they're posting. Don't you understand that people only post the best moments of their life on Instagram and on Facebook? So you're trying to compare your average typical day to what someone probably does once in their lifetime. The Bible says that you shouldn't be comparing yourselves. That's what fools do. If you really want to compare yourself with anyone, compare yourself with Jesus. See how holy he was and see how holy he wants you to be. The Bible says to examine yourself. A lot of us, we're examining other people. We're saying, oh, they do this, oh, they do that. They're annoying, they curse a lot. Oh, I don't like the way they dress. I don't like their shoes. I don't like their hairstyle. I don't like this. Why are you worried about other people for? Worry about yourself. You're not right with God, you're going to hell. And you're so focused on other people that have the potential to go to heaven. We gotta mind our business today. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to work with our hands and he wants us to mind our business. And for anybody that's gonna say, well, how come you preaching on this microphone? That's not minding your business. So this is my business. This is my work. This is what God called me to do. I clocked in and I'm not leaving until God tells me to leave. Amen. And it's my business to tell you to repent and turn back to God. Hallelujah. Everyone here is my business because I'm interested in you getting to heaven. I want you to enter into a place with golden streets and with a loving God. That's what I want. I want everybody to be saved because God wants everybody to be saved. And I share the heart of my father. Now, some of you have the heart of the devil where you say, hey, don't judge me. Don't talk about my life. Don't say this. Don't say that. Don't you know, regardless of what you do, people are going to talk about you. You could be a millionaire. People are going to talk about you. You could be dead broke in the streets. People are going to talk about you. Get used to it. You're living in a world with 8 billion people. Somebody is going to talk about you. And most of the time it's going to be bad. Who cares? Why do we allow people to control us 
with their words and with their thoughts. Why do you care so much what other people think? God delivered me 